So today we are covering uh, 3.1, which is quadratic functions. Um, so we're going to look at quadratic functions. We're going to look at their graphs and their important parts and go from there. So the graph of a quadratic function, um, when we're graphing a quadratic function, a lot of times it helps to get it in this form here. We're used to quadratics being in the form of f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, which we can graph that way, but first we're going to look at graphing when it's in this form here. And so here are some rules to help you. If a is greater than zero, the parabola opens up and y is equal to k is the minimum value. If a is less than zero, the parabola opens down and y equals k is the maximum value. h and k is the vertex of our parabola and x equal h is the axis of symmetry. So uh, a step-by-step -step method for graphing equations of quadratics when they are like this is to determine the vertex first, first um, determine whether the parabola opens upwards or downwards, which also determines whether you have a minimum or a maximum. Um, find the x-intercepts, find the y-intercepts, and then plot the intercepts and the vertex and any additional points that we might need. And then we can draw the curve. So let's take a look at this first one. We know that our vertex is h, k. So our h in this case is 3 and our k is 8. So our vertex is 3, 8. So the axis of symmetry is x equal to the x value from the vertex. So x equals to 3. Um, we know that since this is a negative right here, that it's going to open downward. So that means that we are looking at a maximum point. Our maximum y will be 8. So then for your y-intercepts, you just need to substitute in 0 for x and solve. So if we have negative 2 times 0 minus 3 squared plus 8, then we have negative 2 times negative 3 squared plus 8. So that's negative 2 times 9 plus 8. So we get negative 18 plus 8, which gives us a negative 10. So our y-intercept is the point 0, negative 10. So we can go ahead and find our x-intercepts as well, even though I didn't list them. Let's go ahead and find them. So to find x, we just let 0 equal f of x. So we have negative 2, x minus 3 squared plus 8. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Then divide by negative 2. And then take the square root of both sides. And then that means x is equal to 3 plus or minus 2. So x is equal to uh, 3 plus 2, which is 5. And x is equal to 3 minus 2, which is 1. So our x-intercepts are the points 5, 0 and 1, 0. So if we pl plot our uh, vertex, 3, 8, so 3, 8, and we plot our uh, y equals negative 10 right here. Um, so 0, negative 10. And then we plot our 1, 0 and our 5, 0. Then we get a parabola. That's not a very good parabola. get a parabola that looks like this. Okay. 
And if you wanted to realize, yes, X here, this is your line of symmetry. So if we have a point here that's three away, then it makes only sense that we have a point here that's three away. So if you look at that, that's a distance of three and that's a distance of three. So if we label all of our points, our vertex was three, eight, our X intercepts were um, one, zero and five, zero. Then this point, our Y intercept was zero, negative 10. And then this is just another point we found by observing the symmetry. And so this point here is uh, six, uh, negative 10. All right, let's look at another one. So here, we're taking a look. Um, it asks us for our domain and range to begin with. So if you recall, oh, this is the same problem from before. So I'm just going to write the domain and range on this page. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. We can clearly see that because we are going to go this direction forever and this direction forever. And then our range starts from our highest point at our maximum. So from, uh, or from our lowest point, we know we're going to go down forever. So we're going from negative infinity to eight, our maximum, and that's included. Good. So Good, this one's all on the same page. So let's work this one together now. So our vertex, remember your vertex comes here. This sign is negative in our original formula. So that means our vertex in this case is negative four, six. So our axis of symmetry is at X equal to negative four. Um, since there is, this is a positive right here, it opens upward. So that means we're going to have a minimum value. Our minimum is y equal to 6. Our y-intercept here, if we want to find our y-intercept, we're going to just let x be 0. So we have 3, 0 plus 4 squared plus 6. So uh, we get 3 times 4 squared plus 6. Um, I'm going to continue right here. So we get uh, 3 times 16 plus 6. So 3 times 16 plus 6 gives us 54. So, oh, I meant to get the eraser. So our y-intercept is the point 0, 54. Um, our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, again, because it's a quadratic. Our range comes from our minimum this time, so we have from six to positive infinity. So if we keep this in mind that we have this vertex at negative four, six, and it's a minimum, which means we're going like this, it's a minimum, since it's a minimum, that means we're never going to cross the x-axis. So there are no x-axis, uh, no x-intercepts. So there are none here. I'm going to draw my graph a little better. Um, if we think about this, if we have a negative 4, right, or this is the point negative 4, 6. Okay. If we put in negative 3 into our formula, negative 3, so I'm finding additional points. If I put 3, negative 3 plus 4 squared plus 6, well, that gives us 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6. So 3 times 1 plus 6. So we get 9. So we have a point at negative 3, 9. Well, we know that this is an axis of symmetry. 
So that means if we have a point at negative 3, 9, we also have a point at negative 5, 9. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the point we found over here, uh, negative 3, 9. And then using symmetry, we found the point um, negative 5, 9. All right. So um, this next one is when we have the form uh, that we're used to, our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So when we're graphing with this form, we need to first find our vertex. We find our vertex by taking negative b divided by 2a and then substituting that into the formula. And then we have our vertex. The same rules apply um, and we'll be able to work these very similarly to the ones we've already worked after we find the vertex. So let's take a look here. So on this first one here, we have x squared minus 2x minus 2. So first to find the x for the vertex, we're going to take our negative of our b divided by 2a. So we're going to have negative of negative 2 divided by 2 times 1. So that's going to give us 2 over 2, which we know is just 1. So the x value for our vertex is 1. For the y value, we just substitute in 1 for the equation. So we have y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 2. So we have y minus 2 minus 2, which gives us a... Uh, 1, negative, let's see, um, negative 3. There we go, negative 3. So our vertex is 1, negative 3. Here our A is still positive, so it's still moving upward. It's still turning upward. So we're going to have a minimum here, and our minimum, um, oh, I skipped the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is still x equals 1 from the x value of the vertex. Our minimum is at y equals negative 3. So our y-intercept, the nice part about it being in this form is when you substitute in 0 here to find your y-intercept, both of those become 0, and your y-intercept is always your c. So our y-intercept in this case is 0, negative 2. So then if we do our domain, our domain still follows the same rule. It's a quadratic, so it is negative infinity to positive infinity. In our range, we have a minimum here, so we are going from negative infinity. Oh no, a minimum, right? So we're going from negative 3 to positive infinity. There we go. And that negative 3 is inclusive, so we want to make sure that has a bracket. So let's go ahead and plot our points. We have our vertex at 1, negative 3. We have our uh, y-intercept at 0, negative 2. Well, then we automatically know by the line of symmetry that we have here on our vertex, right, line of symmetry, that we have a point here. And we could factor to find the zeros here, but really when you have three, you're good enough to draw the quadratic. You don't really need the x-intercepts unless they're explicitly asked for. And I didn't ask for it in this question. So our parabola looks like this. With the vertex at um, 1, negative 3 our y-intercept at 0, negative 2, and using the line of symmetry, that gives us 2, negative 2 as our third point we need for our quadratic. So let's look at another one in, of this type. <clears throat> so again, your vertex comes from the negative b over 2a for your x. So we have negative, negative 4 over 2 times negative 2. So we have a positive 4 
over a negative 4. So we're going to use negative 1 as our x. So our vertex this time has negative 1 as the x value. So we substitute that in. And negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 3. So we get negative 2 plus 4 plus 3 giving us 5. So our vertex here is 5. So your axis of symmetry is at x equal negative 1. Uh, this is negative, so it's pointing down, which means we're going to have a maximum. So our max is at y equals 5. Our y-intercept here is 0, 3, because our c tells us our y-intercept. Um, our domain is negative infinity, positive infinity, and our range is negative infinity to 5. So if we take a look at this, we have our 0, 3 to 0, 3. Okay. Oh, nope. Hold on. Yeah, we have 0, 3 as our y-intercept. Our vertex is negative 1, 5. So negative 1, 5. Since this is a line of symmetry again, we can use that idea to know that there's a point here. So we have our vertex of negative 1, 5, our y-intercept of 0, 3, and we use the line of symmetry here to find negative 2, 3. Perfect. So um, one last thing we're going to look at for quadratics is applications of quadratics. So being able to use quadratics to serve, uh, do word problems. So first, let's think through this first one. A ball is thrown upward from an initial height of 12 feet. So what's happening is if we look at this like it's a graph, we're at 12 feet. And so that's our y-intercept. So we are throwing the ball. It's going to go up and then it's going to hit the ground, right? Which would be our x-intercept. So we're told that the formula for this pictorial representation is h of x is equal to negative 0.1x squared plus 0.7 plus 12. So where x is the ball's horizontal distance, so again, these are your x values, and this is your y values. Um, so we want to find the ball's maximum height. So we want to find the y value of the vertex, essentially, right? So to be able to do that, we're looking for k here. We're going to use the fact that we know that the vertex is equal to Um, negative b over 2a, and then taking that value and substituting it into the original formula, right? And that will give us that k that we're looking for. So our h, in this case, is negative 0.7 over 2 times negative 0 0.1. Okay, so when we do that, we get 3.5. So then to find our k here, we're substituting 3.5 into the original equation. So when we do that and we solve, we get 13.225. So the max height that the ball will reach is 13.225 feet. So that's the answer to part A. Part B is working off of the same problem. So how far from where the ball was thrown does the maximum height occur? 
So we already solved that, right? We already found how far away we are. That is our H in our vertex. So that was 3.5 feet. So um, we are 3.5 feet from where the ball was originally thrown. And then it says, how far does the ball travel horizontally before hitting the ground? So if we think about this with our picture, then we're asking, how far are we going here? So we're asking for our x-intercept, if that's where we hit the ground. So for the x-intercept, we're just setting our original formula equal to zero. So we have negative 0.1x squared plus 0.7x plus 12 equal to zero. Obviously, that would not be pretty to factor. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to, a reminder, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to negative 0 0.7 plus or minus the square root of 0 0.7 squared minus 4 times 0 0.1. Oh, that's a negative 0 0.1. Negative 0 0.1 times 12 all over 2 times negative 0 0.1. So when you solve that, you get x equals negative 8 or 15. Well, we know it's a distance, so it can't be the negative number, right? Distance isn't negative. So 15 feet is our final answer here. So let's look at one more example. A fourth grade class decides to include to enclose a rectangular garden using the side of the school as one side of the rectangle. What is the maximum area that the class can enclose with 32 feet of fence? What should the dimensions of the garden be in order to yield this area? Draw a diagram. So first let's think about our diagram. We have the school building and we have a rectangular garden, right? That's fenced in. So if we just use X and Y here, x would be our width and y would be our length. So we want to find the maximum area that the class can enclose the 30 uh, with 32 feet of fencing. So we know the area of a rectangle is x times y, right? So if we then think about what formula comes from the information we're given, we know that we have 32 feet so another formula we can write is the perimeter, right? Because we have 32 feet of the uh, fencing. So we have x and x, so that's 2x plus y equals 32. Now, once we do that, we can solve this equation for one of the parts and then substitute and use uh, solving equations essentially. So I'm going to solve for y. If I subtract 2x from both sides, then I get y equals 32 minus 2x. So then that means I have a equal to x times 32 minus 2x as my area. So when I do that, I can distribute that x. I get a equals 32x minus 2x squared as my area. So that is a quadratic, right? If we look at this and rewrite it in standard form for a quadratic, we would get our area is equal to negative 2x squared plus 32x plus 0, right? Because we don't have a c term. So to find the maximum here, because this is a parabola, we can find the maximum by using that vertex again. So with our vertex, we have h is equal to negative b over 2a. So we have negative 32 over 2, negative 2. So we have 8. 
So then k is equal to negative 2 times 8 squared plus 32 times 8. I don't need to write that plus 0 on there. I was just showing you it's a quadratic. So k equals uh, 128. So if k equals 128 here, that's the maximum... Uh, that's the maximum area that we want is that 128, right? So our maximum area is 128, okay? And we have an X, um, as an 8 here. So we know that our x has to be 8 here to get that area, right? So 128 equals 8y, right? We know that. So then if we divide both sides by 8, y equals um, 16. Good. So our garden is 8 foot by or 16 foot. And so that concludes 3.1. And I'll see you for 3.2.